So thank you for joining us this afternoon. This session is changing focus on well-being as the team has changed their fundamental needs from a job. The evolution of Magic, Magic Care's well-being strategy pre-pandemic, during the pandemic, and then now in the future. So we've got Angela Boxall, CEO, COO of Magic, Majestic Care, and Karen Burton, Head of Innovation and Happiness at Majestic Care. That sounds a fantastic job. Over to you both. <laughs> Thanks, Jade. Very happy, aren't you, Karen? Yeah. <laughs> A very happy, Karen. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, so, obviously, today is the Wellbeing Festival for uh, the Institute of Health and Social Care Management. So, um, we looked at it and thought, who better than sort of Karen, who's our head of people, um, who does a fantastic job with um, our wellbeing strategy um, to share how we completely appreciate how difficult it is and how it's evolved, um, as Jade said. Um, pre-pandemic to now. Um, so Karen, I'll hand over to you. Um, yeah, so um, this is really um, a presentation about our journey so far. Um, our wellbeing strategy is continuing to evolve. Um, so it's always a work in pro progress. So um, from where we've started this from, it's probably about 2017, 2018, where we've started to put a real focus back on the strategy. So uh, that's where the presentation begins from as well. So we didn't start our strategy, uh, we didn't just pluck it from thin air, we did lots of research, we looked at lots of stats from social media job boards, we got lots of um, our own stats from our current employees and employees that are no longer with us, and uh, we did lots of surveys and focus group and got some qualitative feedback as well from our team. And what we found was staff retention was low. Um, it was low, but it was in line with the rest of the industry, but obviously we wanted to improve this. Those most likely to leave employment were millennials under the age of 35. And when they did leave employment, it was likely to be within the first year and a significant amount, amount of leavers listed lack of recognition as their reason for leaving. I think at that time our average age was about 47 yeah. for, for employers. And, and the, older, the older the employees were when they started with us, the more likely they were, stay, were likely to yeah. stay for longer as well. That, so we're yeah. obviously missing something in our offering to, to our younger employees. So we had a look at the secondary research, which told us to improve our retention, we needed to look at values, progression and engagement, which me being me didn't believe. So I did our own research on our own Majestic Care team and lo and behold, they were right. So 0% of leavers start, stated that a better pay was a motivation for leaving. 67% of leavers listed future prospects as one of their reasons for leaving or lack of. 44% of leavers said the training they received was poor and 24% of current employees said they were not involved with the running of the homes. Then we believed them, didn't we? So we, we did. started to do some work on our values. Um, the team that we'd got really wanted to work hard and were working hard, but only for an organisation that matched their own values. Um, and we found this um, did, did come a lot more from our younger sort of millennial um, and, and further generation. Um, so our team also wanted to work in an environment where they had mates at work, so they got to know their co-workers um, and they could build that stronger bond. I mean, we're at, we're at work more than anything else, so obviously people need that social interaction at work as well. So we created our Majestic Care values. They look very pretty. <laughs> um, so again, they weren't plucked out of thin air. Um, we got a focus group together of our directors, our leadership team, um, our housekeepers, our home managers, catering, residents, um, and we spent a lot of time developing these values and made sure that they were personal to, to all of us in our company. So those values were happiness, trust, creativity, heart, and family. Yeah, and it was overwhelming, especially sort of, you know, the family tended to be, which actually was in line with people wanting to come to work and sort of have their mates, their family around them. So overwhelmingly, one of the things that people thought that did work with Majestic Care was that family was right up there as one of the top values. And then we had a vision, which was create outstanding places where people love to live and work. 
Um, and that's outstanding for us and for the residents and for the team. We don't mean outstanding for CQC, as, although that's a bonus. Um, the, the other point, progression. Our team wanted career progression. Uh, they don't just, just want to learn their current role, but they want to be prepared for the next step on the ladder and they want to continue, continuously grow and develop. So basically, they want the career in care. Who doesn't? It's a great uh, industry to work in. So we tried to work with um, people that were in our team across the homes and we came up with something called the Majestic Care Mentors, which um, work in our homes, mentoring the teams and making sure that everybody is happy, confident and competent within their role. Um, we wanted to be much more of an innovative um, and put a, a real digital spin on the care that we were providing. And we found that actually, especially with that younger team group, that really did start to bring in that engagement. Yeah. We did a lot more sort of classroom training. So people got to know people whilst they were learning, um, shadowing just one person on a shift, um, especially for new team members. Uh, just wasn't you know whilst that's that is important we felt that giving everybody a start date together they felt again part of that team and instead of just offering mandatory training we're looking at um, actually best practice and ways people can develop so they can uh, log on or or suggest classroom training um, which they they're interested in in order to progress their career as well and from that everybody got their own um, specialist sort of personal development plan uh, which formed then part of the training tool and was and we could also then see what money was being invested into which departments in our homes um, very often the 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 money is going into sort of the care but actually people within our housekeeping teams our kitchens also you know require that resource to carry on development um, we moved away from sort of job descriptions so we still had the job description but it underpinned what we called a job design so this was something that was um, a lot more easy to understand something that was shorter and actually gave people more of a, a, a reason for their role rather than just so instead of telling them what to do we told them what they needed to achieve and they decided what they were going to do to achieve that um, from that we had monthly development days that meant that we could continually work with our teams to make sure that this was embedded and not just something that was a directive um, we wanted people to feel part of what it was that we 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 were wanting to achieve for them and for obviously Majestic Care and then ultimately the care of the residents. Um, and then we started to do our R and R days, which is recruitment, retention and recognition, because not only did we, you know, we want to employ the best people, um, but we wanted them to stay with us. And we knew that by, you know, people staying with us, recognition and the different types of recognition is something that we needed to develop a little bit further. Uh, so thirdly, engagement in the workplace. 71% of millennials reportedly are reportedly disengaged at work. Employees need a shared goal and our team want to have their opinions heard. So we started to make a start, but in true sort of, we, we like to do things a little bit different and we feel that, you know, put a bit of colour in um, and a Majestic Air Care Bear. Um, all of a sudden people started to have a little bit of fun at work and started to focus on our happiness value as well. So rather than having staff rooms, and actually we don't like to use the word staff, we like to use the word team or family. Um, we had family rooms. Um, we had a wheel of happiness, which was um, a spinning wheel that our people team would take into the homes or on work meetings where they could spin the wheel and win a prize. Um, we had heart carts put into all of our homes and you can see that all of these things are fitting in with our values so the heart cart was full of sort of things that actually probably make your heart bad Karen but yeah, uh, you know sweets and chocolates and crisps and things a little like pick that me up. a little bit of a pick me up that's better yeah uh, a trust tank so we had you know um it was a, a thing that we had made you stick your hand into um you know a big bucket full of baked beans and pull out a prize um but maybe it might be feathers and things like that um, we had a Majestic Care People focus group, which obviously continued. We started to do team buildings, um, which you'll see a little few but more clips a little bit later on. Um, and Karen was worked very hard on publishing all of our survey results in a way that looked like you said we did. Um, and we made sure everything that our employees said in those surveys was published, so they were extremely transparent. So if you made a comment, it was published. 
Um, and we also then contacted them to say, what can we do? Um, um, you know, not finally, because obviously it evolves, but we did a speak out campaign. So people that want to tell us things, but don't necessarily want to tell us who they are. Some people don't feel that confident in standing Or up. even if they've just got a good idea, um, could be an idea, um, a suggestion for improvement. Um, it could be a concern or an issue they're having. They're quite welcome to leave the name and we'd love to get them involved with um, where we go moving forward with it. But again, they, they can just contact us confidentially and we'll follow that up. What motivates you at work? 53% of people that we asked said team. Um, I think that sort of says it all. There's some of our Majestic Care team in the background there. We talked about team building. So we're just gonna show you a little bit. Sorry. Oh. Technology. So we've done um, lots of different team building events so far. We've gone to the seaside. We've done uh, human table football, murder mysteries, um, our famous Michael Jackson's thriller recreation as well. We then had to think a little bit differently for team building during COVID. So we did 24 hour live raffles on Facebook. Um, we've done inter-team um, competitions, inter um, company quizzes and things like that. So even during the pandemic, even though things have been slightly different, we've still tried to build that team and make people part, feel part of something special. And what we were finding was, um, it was really developing the trust in our teams. Not only were we getting feedback on these team building sessions, but we, were, we were also found that the leaders in our group were more approachable um, outside of the team building as well. Suddenly everybody realized everybody is human um, mm -hmm. and, and, and we don't have a hierarchy there. It's, it's people could just come and contact you with ideas. So what did our employees say? Um, I love the honesty on this one. Um, way back in 2012, when I started with Majestic Care, it was chaos. It does, it does get better. <laughs> Don't switch off there, for God's sake. <laughs> uh, no teamwork, no delegation. Most of us employees were totally stressed. Now is much better. I don't seem to have any problem at all. I come to work with peace of mind because we all work as a team. I'm so proud to be a member of the Majestic Care team. And I take pride in my work. Our team is dedicated and we strive to meet the Majestic Care values and provide residents with high standards of care. So all the way through that, you can see is the word team. Uh, so we asked, um, what could we do to improve our, uh, our employment offer? Um, recognition featured in 47% um, of our current um, employee value survey and 66% of leavers rated recognition in the company as poor. Uh, this mirrored what reward gateway stats said of 60% of employees would rather work for a company having a recognition culture than a company we, where they paid 10% more. We started to focus much more on our recognition and rewards um, and there's just a few little pictures here so um, we've got a lady down here called Chrissy who um, was nominated and won was it our employee of the year team member of the year or something yeah um, the person that had gone above and beyond um, and she actually won a holiday to Jamaica um, and got to take one of her colleagues with her um, well, she chose to take one of her colleagues yeah, with her, didn't so, she? Yeah, she could have taken anybody, but she chose one of her team, teammates, which we thought was amazing. And then Thelma, um, who is, um, she got our Above and Beyond award that year um, and won a seat at the table with her teammates to the Care Sector Fundraising Ball at the Grosvenor Hotel in London. Um, so we also uh, developed a platform where um, our colleagues could recognise each other as well. So there was um, a base for peer-to-peer -peer recognition and these were these e-cards are based on our values as well. Um, we started on the STAR Award, the Special Thanks and Recognition Awards, um, and we started to build up momentum all through the year and people were voting for their, for their teammates. Um, and the finalists got invited to a nice star awards ceremony with red carpets at Christmas with fake snow, um, live bands and um, a really nice treat for everyone. Uh, so what did our staff say? I feel appreciated in my role and it makes me want to do my job better. I do now, but it hasn't always been that way. And yes, I do, especially from my manager. So you can see we were starting to get there. The recognition was paying off. 
no longer were people saying they didn't feel appreciated. Uh, and then the COVID, 2020, then what happened? Because everybody's motivation and priority has completely changed. So our teams were worried about their physical well-being and the threat of the deadly virus. Our teams were worried for the health of, the, of residents and stressed about the responsibility they now suddenly had to ensure our residents remained safe. And some of, the, some of our teams were isolated from their workplace and left completely alone. So how could we respond to these changing needs of our team? How could we mitigate the risk of catching coronavirus? Um, how could we recognise the efforts of our team when many of the time we were virtually, you know, virtually talking to them or so far away? How can we ensure our team's mental health was being looked after? That was something that we were really concerned about. And how can we make sure that our teams didn't feel isolated and that they felt positive members of the Majestic Care family? So our, our company actually moved very fast in ensuring we have we had plenty of PPE um, and our policies were and procedures were as up to date as they possibly could be, which I think um, gave our team a lot of confidence in what we were doing and gave us the time to concentrate on some other areas as well. Uh, so we had dedicated PPE champions and infection control champions in each of our homes. We did a got, We've Got You Covered campaign, which uh, we sent out every single um, um, team member um, a Majestic Care mask. We've got one being um, modelled here by our lovely Lily. Um, so that was We've Got You Covered campaign. And we also sent them out for, people, for our team members to share with their families. Uh, we suddenly had minibuses that weren't being used because we could no longer take the residents out on trips. So uh, we converted these um, and utilised them as free dedicated travel to work so people could get to work safely without using public transport. Uh, we worked on a stop smoking campaign to support those team members that really wanted to give up smoking and give their health um, and well-being the best possible chance against the, um, the deadly virus of um, COVID-19. So that was sponsored direct personally by our directors as well. So um, anybody that wanted to stop smoking to improve their health, um, if they got some sponsorship, our directors would match that um, and donate it to a, a good cause of their choice. That was lovely. This linked in with healthy eating campaigns, which also became um, the, in our wellbeing hub, which is part of our um, em employee team um, hub, as well as ex uh, free exercise classes. I actually used some of the yoga when I was stuck at home, so that was great. Um, and we even went as far to uh, negotiate with our suppliers uh, to enable our Majestic Care team to do their shopping with them as well, so that they didn't have to go to the supermarkets that their food could be delivered to our homes each week and then they could take it home from there. Um, recognition, uh, we launched our Roses of Recognition, which was uh, roses um, we created every week based on our values and they were named and dedicated after our staff members uh, that had shown that uh, particular um, value during that week. So uh, we did them for all of our values. Um, and you can see in the picture there, uh, one of our team members with their rose. And the idea was that they then get to nurture that rose and watch it grow um, based on that value. We did a hero's bonus. So for those people that worked um, all of their hours throughout lock any lockdowns, not just the first lockdown, but any of the lockdown, we're given 70 pence more an hour um, to help them a little bit more. Um, thank you cards, uh, thank you videos and thank you messages, um, handwritten cards were sent from the directors uh, and we had uh, videos from the directors from the leadership team and uh, also from our suppliers as well. Uh, random acts of kindness, so just a pizza turning up on a Friday night seemed to make a huge difference, um, you know, especially for the night teams who sometimes were a little bit forgotten. Um, wider recognition as well, we made sure that our uh, Majestic Care team were nominated for industry awards. Uh, we've got a picture of Danny Whitehouse down there at the bottom who won Care of the Year at the National Care Awards. <coughs> we teamed up with Misguided, the um, fashion brand, um, and they sent us lots of um, sweetie treats in. Um, and you can see Jackie there with um, a huge amount. I hope, I hope she didn't eat them all herself. Um, and you can see um, a couple of our team up there modeling a special misguided t-shirt that they designed especially for Majestic Care and our team. Um, one of our team members also um, designed the International Nurse Day um, and you can see that they drew that all themselves.
Um, we had a big focus on well-being, so we developed well-being action plans, which were uh, we trained all our leaders on, uh, so that they could help support members of our team. Uh, there was plenty of signposting around um, to to help um, help sites and and organisations and charities. Uh, these were launched um, as posters over social media. Uh, they were they added to all of our our keeping touch cards. Um, and we also had mental health first aiders in each of our homes. Uh, we developed our developed and launched our wellbeing centre, which had things like positivity talks, um, tips to help you sleep, and uh, meditation on there. Um, and you can see there one of the drawings done by one of our carers and a resident, which just states that we're we're all in this together. And that was the the general feeling we had um, on looking after each other's mental wellbeing as well. Uh, but we also focused a lot on the our majestic kids, um, our teammates, um, children, as well as our own children, um, and made sure that we did lots and lots of things that involved them as well and made them feel part of the majestic their family. This was the Pokemon competition, is that right? So we did we did the coloring competition, Pokemon competition, and we also did the majestic super league uh, of superheroes, where uh, the kids sent us in videos of um, them showing their superpowers and their new Majestic Care greeting as well. We couldn't shake hands, but Zach uh, did a great woolly hand shake. Woolly high five. I think. <laughs> a woolly high five. So we wanted to promote a holistic approach to wellness as well and our teams and wherever possible, we wanted to look after each other. Um, um, we felt that not only did that make sure that everybody had somebody to talk to, but actually it brought everybody closer together. So the e-cards um, were mainly then now going from colleague to colleague to say, you know what, you were a star today. Thank you so much. I think it's unsustainable to have uh, just a few people in your organisation that are responsible for well-being. I think the only sustainable approach is um, just to encourage and educate people to to everybody to to yeah. look after each other and themselves. Uh, when people did have to go into isolation, we made sure, because back, back then it was a lot longer than it is now, especially the way it's going to be at the end of Feb by the looks of it. Um, so, you know, we would send the stay safe card, welcome back, we've missed you card. Um, and just sort of saying to people, you know, take care of yourself. Thanks for the hard work, rest up and keep safe. Um, and it looked work. 97% of our staff felt positive about their role and importance of a key, as a key worker. 95% of staff felt supported with their well-being from Majesticare and 90% of staff felt valued by Majesticare and 100% felt valued by their colleagues. So great results. And then the clapping stopped, I suppose. The public recognition lost its momentum. The wider industry reopened, offering attractive packages to tempt our team away from us. Yeah, thank you, Amazon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hospitality obviously as well vaccinations for kids were requirement for those working in social care and our team were classed as low skilled workforce again and that was obviously as defined by the low skills in our government and Thank you, government. <laughs> um, obviously we all had a bit of a lack of social interaction which obviously has an impact there were obviously huge staffing crises across the industry and everybody was exhausted you know they'd worked through the the pandemic there was there was a really big staff burnout um, so this was reflect, reflected in our team survey results. 20% of our team were not positive about their future um, or their role, and 36% 30, were unsure. 44% of our team felt more stressed as a result of the pressures of COVID. 74% of the team still felt valued in the work. 86% felt valued by their colleagues. But uh, these are high, but obviously they've, they've dropped from uh, where we were at before. And only 59% of our team felt positive about their role, their importance as a key worker. That's a drop of 38% within a year. That's just so sad after everything that they've done. So what next? You know, we continue to improve our mental, physical and financial well-being offering to all of our team and the Majestic Care family. We are trying so hard to put the focus back in the social well-being. We're bringing back our team building and social events, obviously very COVID safe, risk assessed, and obviously keeping an eye on what's happening, you know, across the, the industry and, and across the UK and promote the care sector and social care industry 
as a skilled workforce. So, you know, not only are we wanting to recognise our own team members, our own majestic care family, but actually, you know, we need to be recognising every every social care worker, you know, 1.6 million of them. Uh, so we're we're focusing back on our mental well-being. Uh, we've got more mental health first aiders in our homes, and we've now uh, started training um, advanced mental health first aid practitioners as well. We've got promotion of our employee assistance program, which gives all of our employees and team members and family um, a chance to have free counselling. Um, we've got Wellbeing Wednesday, where we have a fo different focus every week on a, a new wellbeing initiative. And focus on peer-to-peer -peer recognition, because as you could see from earlier results, that was what was really making the difference. Uh, with our physical wellbeing, uh, we're still sending out our care packages. Our most recent ones went to our night staff for no other reason than I can't think, personally, I can't think of anything worse than having to get up on a very, very cold, dark night and uh, de-ice my car and uh, <laughs> Ready for get out of the shit. Shimmers, yeah. <laughs> so what we did was we sent a uh, de-icer and ice scrapers, ready break, coffee, hot chocolate, hand warmers in care packages to all our night staff. Uh, and we've had a let's talk menopause. Um, you know, we, we talked earlier about what the average age of our workforce was. Um, you know, it's anything between 57 and 54 across the sector, although, it, you know, those, those figures are coming down. Um, but obviously menopause is, is quite um, a focus for many people and it's, it's you know, it's, it's definitely something that we need to make sure that we're talking about and, and actually making sure that we're meeting people's needs if they need it. Um, financial wellbeing, we've recently launched our Majestic Care More bonus where people got um, a bonus for working their contracted hours um, and for working any extra shifts as well. They also got bonus um, if they showed us proof of their vaccinations in a timely manner as well. And Care Friends, so we work with Care Friends and Neil Eastwood where it's an employee referral system uh, which has had a huge impact not only on bringing in new team members but actually it's a great way of current employees and team members earning more money. Um, so, you know, when we needed a little bit of a boost, we'd do Care Friends double point. Um, social wellbeing, uh, we want more digital, digital social interaction. Uh, we don't want uh, where somebody is in the country to be a barrier to um, being social with, with our other homes. So uh, we want all our homes and teams to interact together. We want to start the plan team builders again, as I said earlier, COVID safely. Um, and get back to meeting our teams again because we miss them. Care friends, we're going to keep using that. Employee referral is a great way of bringing in new team members and people often then are already friends before they start working together. And I think it's it's with care friends, you're, you're attracting, uh, because we recruit by values, um, those people are then going to be associated by people with mm -hmm. the same values. Um, so it's a great way of getting people in that are going to fit into our team and, and create that better social environment. And Talk Care. Talk Care is a new app. Um, you can download it on Apple or Android. Um, and it's an app that's for people that work in the sector um, to talk to other people and network with other people that work in the sector. Sometimes it helps just to know that other people are going through the same thing. And the great thing about Talk Care is it's not a moaning platform. It's actually a, a platform to learn and grow and support. So oh, we wanted to look at uh, playing our part in improving the social care sector. So we are founding patrons of Championing Social Care, which is an organisation that works with people that live and work in social care to make sure that we do just that. We champion all the good news stories. and We raise awareness of the amazing things that people that live and work in social care do every single day. Um, Purple Tuesday, uh, we want to support those in our workplaces who have health conditions or impairments to enable them to reach their potential. So uh, we want to level the playing field um, between all of our team and make sure they've all got the same opportunities to achieve. But moreover, we want to attract those people that may have um, an impairment um, to our industry and get them into work with us, with our support. Uh, talk care I've already talked about but that is something then that we were starting to set up our own groups within talk care so we had an, um, an activities team group a managers group a chefs group so again we could make sure that not only were people networking but networking with like-minded people in the doing the same job every day and we've recently signed up to be a mindful employer um so this this charter means we commit to pro provide non-judgmental and proactive support to our team members experiencing mental ill health 
and that's near enough it. We've got a little video to show you at the end, just to show you um, some of the recognition that we did um, throughout um, the, the pandemic. So, you know, recognition and team building doesn't have to just be done in person. So hopefully you'll be able to get a few ideas from, from the video. And thank you very much for listening to us today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jade. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Angela. That Majestica looks a fabulous place to work. No wonder your staff feel so valued now and are really enthusiastic about going to work. Thank you so much for your time.